Hello everyone, welcome to our today's video on shrimp farming. I'm Dr. Rakhi Dash, Assistant Professor of Aquaculture Department, School of Agriculture, Sage University, Bhopal. Today I'm discussing with you different type of sheep and their cultures in India. Generally, shrimp are widespread and abundant. There are thousand species adapted to a wide range of habitat. They can be found near the sea floors or most coast and estuaries, as well as rivers and lakes. Shims are often solitary, though they can form large schools during the spawning season. They play important roles in the food chains and are an important food source for large animals ranging from fish to quails. Next come to the point, traditional or extensive shim farming system. This is the most simplest shim culture approach. In this farming system, seed stock normally come from wild and supply is season dependent. Shim fry found in this forms again gained in plants during water exchange or are intentionally stocked by the farmers with fry collected from the wild. Extensive farming employs very few stocking densities. Generally, it ranges from about 3,000 to 5,000 fry per hectare in this grow out scheme and supplementary feed in this system is not given and water management is by tidal actions also. Intensive shrimp farming system. In this culture method, the culture operation is more sophisticated, requiring very high financial and technical inputs. The distinct features of this culture operation is this completely dependence on hatchery waste fry, high stocking density, and a formulated feed, application of operation to increase dissolved oxygen level in pond, such as an uh, intensive water management program. The shrimp in these systems are daily fed highly protein formulated feed. Stocking density mainly ranges from 200 to 250 per square meter, and average production ranges from 1.5 to 3 tons per crop in 1,000 ton per tank. Next, Amari. Semi-intensive shrimp farming. In this culture method, this method involves higher stocking rates, use of supplementary fees, and the implementation of the water regulatory management scheme. And generally, the typical rate of stocking fry in this system uh, operations varies from the 20,000 to 15,000 fry per hectares. And the operation also requires the use of a water pump to facilitate the water actions also. Selection of site is very important for stream farming. Basically, it's choose on topography, ecosystem, meteorological, socioeconomic condition in relation to farm design, species compatibility, and economics viability also. Suitable water quality for stream culture. Generally, pH, salinity, and dissolved oxygen are the main factors who should be maintained for achieve a good production from the shrimp farm when cultured the shrimp. The pH of the water preferably ranges from 7.5 to 8.5. Dissolved oxygen level should not be lower than 4 ppm. Sanity should be ranges from 15 to 40 ppt also. Feed in shrimp farm. In the natural habitat, shrimp feeds on other small crustaceans, fin fish, mollusks, polychaetes, and other slow moving benthic organisms. Generally, uh, in natural ponds, shrimps can feed different types of zooplankton and benthic organisms, which in turn become food of shrimps. In supplementary feed, the commonly used supplementary feed for shrimp farm is. Uh, rice bin with trash fish, shark toads, and frogs, snails with shells crushes also. Major disease in shrimp farms. Disease is the main obstacles for any type of culture. The disease in shrimp can be bacterial, protozoan, or viral. Generally, some diseases are commonly seen in the commercial shrimp farm, uh, which are white spot disease, Early mortality syndrome, shell disease, luminous vibriosis, chronic soft cell syndrome, and black gill disease. What is white spot disease? White spot disease mainly supposed to be a viral disease, but it can be also happen when the environmental parameters are not regularly maintained. Shrimp affected by this uh, white spot disease 
or exhibit a loss in appetite and abnormal swimming. Early mortality syndrome. Early mortality syndrome, also known as acute hepatopancreatic necrosis disease. The disease caused by the Vibrio parahemolyticus in peanut shrimp. It affects post-larval stage of the shrimp and identified roughly after 20 to 25 days stocking up after the stocking. Uh, generally, this disease can cause up to 100% mortality in shrimp farm. Next, shell disease. Shell disease, also known as the brown or black spot disease, or even the necrosis of the appendages caused by the shell breaking bacteria within the vibrios, aluminous, and pseudomonas families. This disease affects shrimp from their larval stage up to the adulthood stage, also. Luminous vibriosis. Luminous vibriosis is one of the major disease problems in grow out shrimp culture, is the luminous vibriosis. The disease caused by Vibrio harvey, Vibrio splendidus, and other luminescent vibriosis. It affects the egg, larvae, post larvae, and juvenile of the shrimp. Next, come to the point of chronic shock cell syndrome. Chronic shock cell syndrome disease in shrimp can also be caused by a lack of nutrients as exhibited by a chronic cell syndrome, also known as a shock selling. Next, come to the black gill disease. Black gill disease is most common in any type of shrimp farm. Black gill disease can be caused by the deficiency of ascorbic acid in the diet of the shrimp, as well as the possible contaminants in water, such as calcium, cadmium, uh, ammonia, nitrate, or high organic load can cause by residual feed and debris in this contaminant can also be cause this disease. Disease management in shrimp culture. The following three key elements ensure the better growth of shrimp in shrimp farm. First one is track and promote dissolved oxygen levels. Next, actively eliminate waste builder. And number third is implement and monitor strict biosecurity standard. Thank you for listening to me. Stay tuned and subscribe to our CH University Bhopal page.